And of course, I do live in San Francisco, so that helps. Um, what I want to do uh, in my 10 minutes is, is bring you uh, kind of back to a global perspective and talk about money. Um, because it's something that women oftentimes um, don't talk about and don't realize that money is what makes things move forward. It's why I moved from the social change work I was doing in women's health care. I worked internationally. Um, when, when I came back to uh, the U.S., uh, I said, I want to work in some place that raises money and uses money for social change. And that's how I ended up in women's funds. And for the last 30 years, women's funds around the world have been talking about investing in women and girls. And what's been interesting is in the last three or four years, we've begun to see a tipping point for that. We've seen Goldman Sachs say they're taking $100 million to train 10,000 women in the global south. Uh, we've seen CARE, who now talks about their niche being women and girls. Let me tell you, that was not true 10 or even five years ago. Um, we've seen uh, the, the economists talk about the fact that women working in the developed world um, have more impact on the economy than the economies of India and China put together. And all of these things are happening in a very interesting time. So we're seeing the potential of a tipping point. The problem is that what we don't want it to become is a sexy trend that in five years, everybody says, been there, done that, that's over. Kind of like how they talk about the women's movement. Oh, isn't that done? Haven't we reached everything? I think Linda pointed out very well what, that we have not. So um, I, I want to just talk to you a little bit about uh, two things, money and understanding the contextualization of the issues. One of the things that we need to deal with is the fact that we need to understand that the investing in women and girls is investing in communities. It's just like moving away from women's issues, quote, to community issues. And, and what we talk about in women's funds is that um, this is our logic model. You, uh, an economically secure woman is an economically secure family, economically secure community, et cetera. A woman without violence in her home is a family without violence in their home. It, it, it's all a logic model. And we started using this when we were talking to groups of men and women because it said, you know, we should be logical in our understanding of the world. So if 70% of poverty are women and girls, wouldn't you invest 70% of stimulus package in women and girls? Hello, 6%. 6% is what it's been. Um, so that's one part of it. But the second part of the, uh, of the logic model is called the woman effect, which is you don't just invest in women, you invest in their leadership and their solution building because that's what makes the difference. Then you take that and you play that out among a series of issues that relate from economic development to health, access to health, access to education, uh, freedom from violence, um, environmental integrity, and human rights. All of those things are what we call our human security umbrella. And if every village in the world had that overlooking it, and every country had that, we would have a totally different world. Because it's the same thing that you all want for your families. It's no different for women and men around the world. And that's the logic model. Now, the problem is that logic model requires to be funded. There has to be money at the table. And women also have that. In this country today, over 51% of the wealth in this country is in, the ha is in the name of women. And in the next 20 years, we expect that to rise because we're looking at about $40 trillion moving to the next generation. And because women live longer, it's expected that 70% of that money is going to be in the hands of women. So the question becomes, for all of us, what are we doing about it? So it's not just a matter of other people having it, because never before in history have women had more education, more access to wealth, more influence than they do now. And yet we still see, as Linda talked about, the lack of the 30%. And that's why each one of us have to take our opportunity to take leadership in the place that we are. We need to learn about money in a different way. And that means that money is a, is a tool of social change. For a lot of years, women have been the cheap labor of the social change movement. <laughs> and it needs to stop. And part of that is our problem in terms of how we support social change. Because oftentimes, women write smaller checks, although that's beginning to change. Women write checks for um, specific programs, not for general operations. Except when you look at the right. In the right movement, in the movement on the right, people more often write checks for general operation because it allows organizations to move forward and do their work. We as women are micromanagers around our philanthropy. We want to be involved and we think involvement is micromanaging. 
And, and so we have to begin to think differently. We have to begin to look at money differently. Women are 70 to 90% of the consumers in this country and around the world. Now, why are we not using that tool to change the corporations so that they will have 30% sitting in their senior management and on their boards? So th there are many places that we have an opportunity to make change, but we don't very often use our money. You don't have to be wealthy to use your money. I can't begin to tell you the number of people I know who use money who don't have it. I, I will just tell you, it, it's out there. And, and in the same way that Amy was talking about, women oftentimes feel like they don't know enough about money. We used to have a, uh, uh, we started a group called She Source, which is to get women experts on, uh, in television. And one of the things we found for women who had worked on Wall Street, run hedge funds, when you'd come to them and ask them to be on television, they'd say, what's the topic? And you name it. They'd say, oh, we don't know anything about that. It was in finance. We said, neither do the guys they're asking, so just get on television and talk. <laughs> because, the, you know, nobody is an expert in everything. You know enough to be able to do a five-minute interview. Let me tell you, they can't ask you that much during those five minutes. So get out there and get on the television or radio show. That's the, those are the issues that we need to deal with. We need to understand that what we're dealing with is very complex issues. We talk about it as a wicked problem that's used in social innovation. A wicked problem is one that has so many potential conflicts between its, its problems and its solutions that one silver bullet does not solve it. For example, with women, what do we think solves women? We talk about $50 microloans as wiping out poverty. Get a grip. This is not going to wipe out. It may give a woman a business that she now spends two additional hours of her time in Africa, Spain. So now her workday is 18 hours. But what we're really talking about is you need to not only give the loan, give it big enough like they do at the Women's Fund here in Monterey. They give big enough microloans, and then they surround it with a series of programs from education to support that allow people to create and build programs. Because poverty is not changed by a job. Poverty is changed by asset building. And those are the kinds of things that we need to remember as we do the work. That what we're doing is very complex, even though you want to focus. We have another silver bullet called girls' education. We think if we educate all the girls in the world, life will change for all of us. Do you know what happens to girls who are educated in Guatemala? They finish high school, they do great education, then they go out to get jobs. And what do they have? There are three possible jobs for many of those girls. They go back to their village, get married, and get pregnant. Or they go into the city and become domestic workers and get abused, or they become street workers. Because nobody has bothered to develop an economic system within Guatemala, and that's just an example of one place, that can actually handle the girls that are coming out who are educated to do a different job. So it's not only about mentoring, which is key. It's not only about scholarships, which are key. It's not only about microfinance. It's about policy change. It's about structural change. And that's what we have an opportunity to do. So there are, there are three things that I would recommend as I, as I close, and we can have this conversation. Um, one is write a check to an uh, organization, a women's organization, that's about general operations. Just go out and find one that you want to go to and do it as general. I don't care if it's a $25 check or a $25,000 check. Write that and learn to write that every year. Number two, one of the things that happens in many of our works that we do, as, as Linda said, this is both male and female, but when you go to events like this, there are 11 men in the room tonight. <laughs> so let me suggest the thing that we Thank do. Thank you for coming. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Um, 11 Smart men man. of good conscience, as we call them. Um, but next time, do what we do in my church, um, which is we have a Sunday where we bring a friend. Next women's event you go to, bring a man. That's very easy to do. And the third thing is, wherever you are in whatever work that you're doing, speak up. And I'll finish with a very brief story about speaking up.